Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to solve the first question of the Codility lesson number 7, which title is Brackets. So in brief we will be given a string of characters and we should test if the string is properly nested, in which case our function should return 1, otherwise our function will return 0. And obviously for a string to be properly nested we have to have all the opening characters, braces, brackets or parentheses, properly closed at different levels, as the example that is presented right here. So to do this, we are going to assign an index for each character type. For example, for the braces, we are going to put 1. For the brackets, it will be 2. And for the parentheses, it will be 3. And the sign of the index will designate whether it's an opening character or a closing character, with negative indexes showing for a closing character. So for this string that is provided in the example that we are seeing here, we have plus one from the first character, then plus two, then plus three, and then for the first closing parenthesis, we have minus three. Then we have another opening parenthesis, plus three, then minus three for the closing, minus two for the closing bracket, and minus one for the closing braces. The solution algorithm works as follows. First, we start by reading the characters, and for each opening character, we're assigning the positive index, and we will be stacking these indexes in a different array as long as these are positive. And when we reach a negative index, we are going to check if it's equal to the opposite of the last or the previous index, because in this case, it would be properly closing the latest opened character. So in this example, minus 3 is the opposite of plus 3, and in this case, we are going to remove the plus 3 from our stacking vector. So now our last element in this vector is plus 2 because it is the latest unclosed character. And we continue. Then we have another plus 3 for the opening parentheses. We are going to add it here in the stacking vector. And then we have minus 3. So we are going to check if it's equal to the opposite of the last index, which is the case. And for this, we are going to remove the last index. So we are back to the last opened character is plus 2 for these brackets here. Then we continue, we reach minus 2, in which case we are going to remove the last index, which is plus 2. And we reach minus 1, which is equal to the opposite of plus 1, which is the last and only remaining index in our stacking vector. And since we have succeeded in removing all the elements of the stacking vector, this means that my string is properly nested, because each opening character was properly closed by the same character type, and at the end we have no remaining loose indexes in the stacking vector. And in this case, we can return 1 as a result. Now, we should be paying attention to some particular cases where we return 0. In this example, we have a closing character at the beginning of the string. So it's a negative index at the beginning of our string, in which case we are going to return 0. Another example is when we have unproperly closed characters just in the middle of our string. And if we take the indexes, we have plus 1, plus 2, then minus 3, which is different than the opposite of plus 2, which is the uh, last or the previous index. And in this case, we can return 0. Now let's see how to write this in C++ and then in Python. So this is our solution function. It takes a string as a parameter, and we're going to start by testing if s is empty, in which case we return 1 because an empty string is a properly nested string. And as simple as this idea might look like, it's one of the traps that would prevent you from scoring 100% on this example, because it wouldn't occur to you that an empty string is considered a properly nested string, unless you have been informed so by the problem description, which is the case here. So the reason I'm underlining this is that for simple problems, sometimes you don't pay attention for the details in the problem description. And it's such a loss because we end up losing points on simple and easy ideas. So then we are going to declare our vector v, which is our stacking vector. This is how we called it in the algorithm description. And this is where we are going to stack the indexes for each of the characters in our string. And t is just a temporary integer that I'm going to use in my operations right here. So we can start our for loop over the characters of the provided string. And we are going to start by reading all the characters of the string and appending an index 
for each of the characters. So an opening a bracket will be a plus one, closing bracket will be a minus one, plus two for the parentheses, plus three for the braces, and so on. It doesn't matter the order, it's just that each character should have a unique index in our stacking vector. Then we are going to test for our first edge case, which means if the string is starting with a negative index or with a closing character, in which case we return zero. So this is the condition that we are adding right here. Then if it's not the case, which means that my first character was a positive index and opening character, we are going to test for each iteration if we have a negative T or a closing character. And if T is different than the opposite of the last character of my stacking vector, I'm going to return zero. Notice here that I'm testing first the cases where we should return zero. Because if I reach the end of my string and I didn't return zero, it means that I have a properly nested string. So with this line, we are saying for any closing character, check if it's of the same type of the last opening character. If not, let's return zero, ending our program. Then we have else if t is negative, and in this case, this condition follows the negation of the previous condition. As if we are saying t is negative, and t is equal to minus v dot back, meaning t is equal to the opposite of the last opening character or the index of the last opening character. And in this case, if this condition is true, we are going to pop back the last element of v. The last else refers to if t is positive, in which case we are going to add all the positive indexes to the elements of v, just as we have explained in the algorithm part. And when all of this is done, we can just test if v is empty, in which case we can return one because our string is properly nested. Otherwise, we return zero. So this else here means that v is not empty, meaning it still contains some unclosed characters or unbalanced indexes. In Python, we also start by the definition of our function, which takes a string s as parameter. And first we test if the length of s is equal to zero, in which case we are returning one as required in the description of the problem. Then I'm going to declare an empty list v where I'm going to stack my indexes later on. And in this solution, I'm going to use a slightly different approach than the one we have used for a C++. I'm going to use the dictionaries of Python I'm declaring the dictionary C, where for each character we will be providing an index, corresponding index, just as we can see here in this dictionary example. And then we can start our for loop over the characters of our string, and we reach the first condition if i is equal to zero and C as i is negative, meaning we are starting our string with a closing character, we're going to return zero. Also, if we have a closing character and at the same time we have no previously opened characters or all the previously opened characters were already closed, we have an empty vector v. And in this case, we also return zero. This is the condition that is here. So if the length of v is equal to zero, I have no previously opened characters, but now I'm encountering a closing character, so there's nothing to close. In this case, I'm returning zero. And I've put into comment here one of the cases where this condition might be true. It's where we have already closed a previously opened character, and then we have another closing character, which is wrongly put here. And in this case, we return zero. Then if I have another negative index, meaning a closing character, which is different than the last positive or opening character of my stacking vector v, in this case, I have also to return zero because I'm trying to close the last opened character with a different type of characters, just like shown in this example here. So we return zero also in this case. Else if I have a negative index, none of these cases are true, which means that the last negative index is indeed closing the last open character. In this case, I can pop the last element of the vector else, meaning in all the other conditions, in all the other cases, I can append the new element, the new index to my stacking vector. Just note that when we put else here, it means that the uh, index is positive in this case. And when all of this is finished, when we have read all the characters of the string, we are going to check if the length of v is equal to zero, in which case we can return one, because in this case, we have properly closed all the previously opened characters and our string is properly nested. 
Otherwise, we return zero as a result. Now I do have one remark regarding our solution, and this is better seen by looking at the Python solution. This condition here, meaning if we have a negative closing character, but at the same time, the length of V is equal to zero, we didn't use it in our C++ solution. We should have done it actually, but we got away without it simply because when we skip this condition and we are looking at the back of the vector in the following condition, when the vector is empty, C++ considers that its back is equal to zero by default. And zero is different from any of the indexes that we have appended to all of these characters. So this condition would have been true. And this is why it worked in C++ even though we disregarded this particular case. And although it doesn't affect our C++ results, it's good to know that we have skipped one of the crucial conditions for this problem. That's all I had to tell you for this example. Thank you again for following these videos. Hope you guys are finding the content helpful. Keep practicing and see you next time.